Jeff, are you familiar with the adage, cheaters never prosper? No. And if I wanted to learn something, I wouldn't have come to community college. Community is, and always will be, one of my favorite TV shows to ever exist. It has something for everybody. That's because of one thing. One thing that makes it unique. One thing that makes it special. Genre show making. This show covers it all. No matter what genre you like, it's probably done that. A Star Wars parody? I ain't in it for your revolution. I'm in it for me. Wait, Abed, this was your idea. I know, but I'm calling dibs on the Han Solo world before Jeff slouches into it by default. Done. A Western. Done. Parallel timelines? done and it's one of the best episodes in the entire series it's done all of that and more genre show making is an amazing way of keeping a show fresh it has something for everybody it makes something for everybody it doesn't matter what genre you like because community has probably covered it it's covered so much that there's bound to be something for everybody oh, i'm a cat i'm a sexy cat <laughs> But before I get into that, let's set some background for what community was. Flashback with me. What? Just trust me. I said a flashback three weeks earlier. It's how this story begins. Close your eyes and concentrate. <laughs> you would not believe your eyes if 10 million fireflies. The year is 2009. NBC is looking to reclaim its spot in Thursday night television. It launched The Office, 30 Rock, Parks and Rec. It's 8 o'clock now and Community is on. You've seen the rest of the shows. They're funny sitcoms that are based in the ordinary. The Office is set in an office with quirky pranks and tricks between co-workers. 30 Rock is set in an NBC studio with quirky movie stars and writers. And Parks and Rec is set in a government with quirky townspeople. Then you find yourself watching the show set in a community college with quirky students. But then it's not. It's not just about the quirky and wacky things that these community college students get themselves up to. It's more than that. You see genres, parodies, they're all over the place. They make fun of themselves and they do their own take on every single genre they love. All the genres you also love. A mafia movie where they peddle chicken fingers. System. Back in those days, Jeff Winger was the guy that made things happen. He always knew what to say. And he always knew when to slap the table. You wanna be sheep? Keep flocking. You wanna be wolves? Form a pack. And that was it. It was that simple. At that moment, we stopped being a family and started being yeah. a family I in italics. A Law and Order episode where they find out who killed the yam. I transferred or downloaded Todd's photograph to this computer. And as you'll see, with a few adjustments, I can make the entire image Old West color. A pillow fight that escalates into a Civil War documentary? You're gonna die, you little bastards! He is part man, part pillow. All carnage. What is this show? It takes on everything, all the genres that you know and love, and it adds its own spin. Every week is a new genre, every week is something new. You hope your favorite genre will be done next. Think about your favorite sitcom. Maybe it's The Office, maybe it's Brooklyn Nine-Nine. Now, what are the most iconic Office episodes? Is it the one where they make a movie within a show? And in regards to Brooklyn Nine-Nine, is it the heist episodes? All of these are amazing examples of genre show making. They are one of the best episodes of their respective shows. Now imagine that. Imagine a heist episode. Imagine a movie within a show episode. But now imagine that every week, that's community, and it's not restrained by the sitcom genre. The episodes of community don't blend together. Even at its very worst, it's still very memorable. Now think about your favorite season of a sitcom. Now try to name as many episodes as you can. I've seen The Office and Parks and Rec countless of times, but I can still struggle naming as many episodes as I can. This is because there's nothing distinct about these episodes. I'm not saying these episodes are bad, because they are not bad. They're really good. But I'm saying that there's no color to them all. Community's episodes stick out like a sore thumb. The reason this is, is because the play on the genres. You remember each episode as... The one where they're playing D&D, &D, the one where they're claymation. This allows an audience to connect with the show on a deeper level and gives them something memorable to work with. It's far more fun when every week is something different and radical. Genre filmmaking also expands the way you can tell jokes. 
when you use genre filmmaking, jokes aren't limited by the sitcom genre anymore. They're not stuck with a single label. Instead of doing what fits within the sitcom genre or what fits within the sitcom setting, community doesn't care. It goes beyond their own genre. That's why they can make more jokes. They're not limited by what they have, what they have to work with. Jeff, do you want to see your dad? He's not coming. But do you want to see him? No! Then why aren't you leaving? Because I don't care, and I'm not going to let him think that I care. Your dad or Pierce? There is no dad! Get this thing out of my face! And don't you dare intercut this with footage of me freaking out! I'll go into this later when I delve into the specific episodes, but for now, I just want to touch upon this. Now, I will be getting into spoilers, so if you don't want spoilers for these episodes, you can skip to this time. Paintball was one of the most revolutionary episodes in Community. It cemented Community's place in the TV landscape and it even led to the Russo brothers being hired to lead the MCU. The MCU, like Community, being full of genre filmmaking. Each installment is usually a genre piece, but with a superhero twist. This is why the paintball episodes are so important. It shows us how amazing Dan Harmon and the Russo brothers are. I think the reason the Russo brothers were hired for the MCU is because they showed how talented they were with genre filmmaking in Community. If you think about it, the MCU is just one big genre project. Most movies focus on a genre. The first paintball episode was revolutionary. I think Modern Warfare got um, a lot of press because I think the episode was incredibly imaginative and there was nothing like it on TV last year. I will say so myself. It showed the viewers that community was something special and unique. It turned the sitcom upside down and introduced something that was never seen before. But the question is, how do you top something as revolutionary as paintball? interviews and people would go, so how would you ever top Modern Warfare? You're never going to be able to do that because you could never do paintball. Cause, and then the only other side of that issue was people saying, like, I know you want to do a paintball sequel, but you can't. The more people talked about how it was impossible, the more I thought, you got to do this. That was the impetus behind doing it again, was we weren't supposed to be allowed to. We weren't supposed to be able to pull it off. I'm here to talk about the two-parter, however, mainly the first part, because I feel like the second part sort of fell off. Fistful of paintballs, and a few paintballs more. The second installment of Paintball completely tops the first one. Even from the start, you can simply tell by the costumes, the style, the direction. They obviously took everything they learned from the first episode and expanded upon it. The world building is perfect. It turns this community college and thrusts it into something more, something themed, something immersive. Everything from the set to the lighting makes the audience buy that this is a western. First thing that we do is we ask ourselves, what is the difference between the ordinary world and the special world of an episode? What threshold are we crossing? But it's not, and that's what makes it special. Like how the MCU blends genres with superhero movies, Community blends genres with itself to make it its own thing. It's not simply genre filmmaking, it's genre adaptation. It's not trying to imitate the Western, but bring it into the world of Community. This is why it works. Look at this shot. I did not edit this. This is the actual shot in the episode. I love how stylized these episodes are. It's what makes it special. Speaking of stylization, I'm going to do a quick detour and talk about one of the best stylized episodes of Community. Basic Lupine Neurology. Dead yam, big deal. Order some ketchup. That doesn't make sense. You don't order ketchup. It's a condiment. Troy, Troy, hey, walk it off. Troy, walk it off. While this episode isn't good enough to warrant its own section, I still think it deserves to be talked about. It is a masterclass in genre filmmaking and how to use it to your advantage to create jokes and open up the world around your characters. The best type of genre filmmaking isn't imitation, it's adaptation. And basic Lupine Neurology is a perfect example of this. 
Community strikes a perfect balance between genre filmmaking and being itself. It's unique to Community. Only in Community can you get a scene like this. You may proceed, Miss Edison, but do so with caution. Need I remind you, this is not a courtroom. Is that why you hit your wife? Withdrawn. Is that why you drink and pop pills? Withdrawn. Are you a virgin? Withdrawn. Did you kill our yam to settle the score? Huh? Did stomping on its roots make you feel like a big man? It's special silliness that you cannot get from any other show. Back to the topic at hand. Dan Harmon says here, We always start with a story and we save the jokes for the end. Community finds a reason for genre show making. It's not just there to be cool. It has a reason to be in there. In this wacky story, it still finds heart and still finds emotion. Any show can make a genre episode. It's not hard. But not all shows can make a genre episode with heart and with passion and emotion. There's more to the gunsling cowboys. There's a conflict between Pierce and the study group. There's more heart to the story, the heart of community. It could have been easy to make this just like the first one, another cool action story with a little bit of character moments, but nothing substantial. There's nothing wrong with that. Fans would have loved it. I would have loved it. But Dan had to top himself. He had to show that it wasn't just another cool and quirky genre episode, that it wasn't just all sparkle. He had a depth to the characterization. That's why this episode is so special. That's why community is so special. It's a story about uh, Pierce. Uh, who's been sort of a dick all year, uh, kind of running the paintball game. To the study group. To the, to the study, study group. group! What is it that makes him a hero? What is it that uh, uh, he's racist and sexist and selfish and, and, and un unredemptive, if he never, ever, ever changes, is there some situation where you can put that zebra where his stripes become pretty? The Pierce study group dynamic is brought to a crescendo in the second part when Pierce saves Greendale and wins the paintball competition. I win! Here we see lasting consequences. It feels like lasting consequences because now the study group has to live without Pierce and Pierce has to live without the study group. No thanks. I'm done with you guys. I like the school, but I'm done with whatever you call this. Adios. For the first time in Community, in my opinion, there is lasting consequences to our characters' actions, which only amplifies the emotion and relationships in the show. No other show can do this crazy stuff and still find time, still find the heart within the characters. Because a lot of shows find it super easy to just make a genre episode, call it cool, and then call it a day. But not Community, not Dan Harmon. Which brings me to my next episode, and my next example. An episode that takes a whole genre filmmaking and character exploration to a whole new level. Give me the snow, light up the trees, deck every hall, and wall you can see, roast every nut, missile the toe, this needs to be the best Christmas since the original, 20,000 years from now, we'll say, the most successful Christmas was today. Okay, we got him, we got him. Down. Within the opening minutes of the episode, you can really tell what it's going to be about. It shows you what it needs to show you to keep you interested and invested. Right off the bat, you can tell it's parodying Christmas movies that we all saw as kids. You know, the claymation ones with Rudolph. Why you practice? It sets up the episode perfectly and the themes of the episode is laid out right in front of you. We know it's about Abed, it's the character study of Abed, but it's wrapped around this veil of claymation in Christmas movies. It starts us strong with setting an introduction to the world that it wants to set up, and it only further develops the world and the characters that inhabit this crazy claymation world. We get a deep analysis on not just Abed, but how Abed sees the world. We understand how he sees everything. The story isn't just about Abed though, it's a story about Duncan. By extension of delving into Abed, we also delve into the group and the role Abed plays in this group. We see Abed's role as the person who makes things happier, the one who makes things more magical. Dan Harmon uses genre filmmaking to remind the viewers what Christmas is all about and the magicalness of Christmas. It's using its art style fully to its advantage. It's justifying its use of this specific art style. It's not really too concerned with telling jokes, even though it does have some funny gags regarding its art style and within the story. I don't suppose you know the meaning of Christmas, Lonely Snowman. Apparently it means getting fondled by singing mental cases. My snowman is alive. Not a snowman. I'm Chang. What the hell's wrong with you today? I thought I made you. Yeah, you made me need to cry in the shower tonight. It's a text from Britta. She says the meaning of Christmas is in the study room. Hey, now that you started it, how about 10 more seconds on that third button, huh? 
but it's concerned with giving us a reason to why everything is stop motion. It's justifying us. It's justifying the art style to the audience. This episode could have been done in live action. It's not that hard, it's much easier than what they chose, but they chose the art style as a conscious choice. The art style connects us more to Christmas and more to those stop motion movies that we all know and love. The movies we'd sit down and watch with our families, and it's only with Abed can the group finally come together and realize that Duncan has been exploiting Abed to get rich and help Abed find the true meaning of Christmas, the true meaning of community, family. The story, they all drop off one by one, giving up on Abed, but eventually, Eventually they come back because they realize that Abed's their friend and their family and family must stick together and here they finally become a true community. They come back to Abed in his most desperate hour. I get it. The meaning of Christmas is the idea that Christmas has meaning and it can mean whatever we want. For me it used to mean being with my mom. Now it means being with you guys. Thanks Lost. <laughs> And with that, that leads me to my final episode analysis. This episode, an episode that perfectly encapsulates community's theme of family. To understand digital estate planning, you first must understand where the group is at this point and why this episode is so important. This episode is a filler episode. It contributes quite little to the overall story and in the case of the Greendale 7 arc, it contributes literally nothing. Yet it's one of my favorite episodes in all of Community. This is because it perfectly encapsulates Community and the Greendale 7 arc. At this point of the story, the study group is kicked out of Greendale Community College. Yet they persist as a family tried to carry on without Greendale. They tried to stay a family without a home. Look at us, still together as a group even. What, two months after being kicked out of you know where? Yeah, good thing I came up with this idea for potluck dinners. Pierce, all you said was I'm hungry. All well, Henry Ford said was I need a ride. Troy, is that a casserole? It's bagel bites and a deconstructed hot pocket reduction with a Doritos glaze. I just really want to make my food, you know? The theme of family is a consistent theme all throughout the community, but it is especially prevalent in this episode. This episode uses genre filmmaking to continue delving into the themes of community without it being repetitive. Dan knows the family aspect of community has been done to death, and it's kinda of boring. So Dan uses genre filmmaking to his advantage to continue doing episodes that delve into family and the themes of family without ever making it boring. Just like the aforementioned fistful of paintballs, the hard-hitting themes of the episode is covered by a veil of fun genre art. They're all in a video game competing for Pierce's dad's inheritance. Forfeiting. Warning. Player forfeit in Gilbert, you're right. You were more his son than me. You took all his crap and you didn't even get to take his name. He once sat on me in church just so he could see better. We've only been playing this game a couple of hours. You've been playing it your whole life. And now it's time for your reward, brother. Morning. So get in there and kill our dad. Once again, Dan Harmon uses the medium to his advantage, creating jokes and stories that fit within the situation that are special. If you max out a character's trust and affection levels, you can gain access to a front-end scripting language. Watch. She can make babies for me. Oh, and I can't. I can't. Jokes are genre jokes, fresh and new jokes to keep the audience on their toes and active. He uses genre filmmaking as a vest to explore topics that have been overdone without making it feel overused. He uses jokes to keep things fresh and new. He feels like he has more stories to tell about the theme of family, but he knows that the audience is sick of it. So he wraps the themes of family in a genre filmmaking episode, which the exploration of Pierce and Gilbert's relationship shows us a side of community we've never seen before. It shows us a look into Pierce's personal life. The episode may not be important, it may not be very thought provoking, but it's a fun feel good episode that I love. Like I've mentioned before, the best way to make a genre filmmaking episode is to make it genre adaptation rather than genre showmaking. In this episode, Community finds a way to weave in the themes into the story and the genre. Family is what saves the group. Abed's fake video game family gives the study group the resources needed to save his study group and his own family. And to defeat Pierce's dad, it's only when Pierce accepts Gilbert and Gilbert accepts Pierce as a family can they get over their death of their father and move on and join forces to end him. So get in there and kill our dad. Hmm. Thank you, Pierce. 
Wait a second. Here. <gasps> yes. Oh. Whoa. You may need it. Oh, Pierce, you really don't know how this works, do you? Are you always carrying that? Not in the shower. Only with family can the group continue to persevere even without Greendale. The theme of families embedded within the story and genre of filmmaking is used to accentuate its theme and style. It gives us a new vessel to consume the thematic content of community while keeping things new and entertaining. This is the greatest day of my life. I've always wanted to have a brother. <laughs> hey, hey, settle a bet. The word mulatto, is it, is it okay or is it borderline? We apologize for him. Oh, that's okay. He's family. Dan Harmon and the crew that worked on Community are experts at genre filmmaking. Community is a masterclass at genre filmmaking and how to do genre filmmaking properly. Community is one of the best TV shows in the last decade, and if its resurgence of popularity now with it being on Netflix is any indication, just aged like a fine wine. This is all thanks to Community's team's perfect character writing and its genre filmmaking that manages to make this show stand out above the rest. This show was truly streets ahead of its time. Community achieves genre filmmaking like no other shows. Many other shows have tried their hand in genre filmmaking, but unlike Community, it was never a defining feature of the show. Community is a masterclass on how to do genre filmmaking and how to do it well. The way you do this is not by simply doing a genre episode. I know, that sounds stupid. The best way to do a genre episode is not by doing a genre episode. But hear me out, Community knows it'll never be as good as the genre it pretends to be so it doesn't take itself as seriously or, or try to be. By realizing a situation, it can focus on what's important, the story and the characters. The genre of filmmaking isn't a core of the episode, but it's still a defining feature. By focusing on what matters, it creates a solid base for the genre of filmmaking to be built upon and enhance the story. The story and the characters are like the base of a cake, but the genre of filmmaking is like the icing. The icing makes it stand out among all the other cakes who have just as good bases. But this cake, this cake stands out because it's got an amazing frosting. And that frosting is genre filmmaking. Now for the most important thing Community does, unlike any other show that does genre filmmaking, it does this the best and it does this in the most unique way possible. It adapts the genre and makes it unique to itself. By making the genre unique to Community, it stops being just a pale replication of the genre and becomes a fresh and unique take on the genre. Community uses genre of filmmaking to keep on evolving and to keep on getting better. Now if you haven't seen this show, I highly recommend you to watch this show. Because if you're anything like me, you'll instantly fall in love with this show. So maybe we are caught in an endless cycle of screw-ups and hurt feelings. But I choose to believe it's just the universe's way of molding us into some kind of supergroup. Like the traveling Wilburys. Yes, Troy. Like the traveling Wilburys of pain. Prepared for any insane adventure life throws our way. And I don't know about you, but I'm looking forward to every one of them. So, I thought the documentary format would be like fish in a barrel. But, as is the case with a real barrel of fish, after a while, it can become cramped, chaotic, and stinky. Fortunately, if in the end your documentary is turning out just as messy as real life, you can always wrap it up with a series of random shots which, when cut together under a generic voiceover, suggest a profound thematic connection. I'm not knocking it. It works. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you like this video, please consider liking, commenting, and subscribing. I'm trying to grow my channel as large as I can. Also, if you like what you saw, why don't you check out the other videos on my channel?